Hi, this is Dr. Diane Poole Heller, and I just wanted to reach out with some heartfelt support and compassion for all of the people connected to the shootings that happened in Boulder recently. It's again, another huge tragedy. And of course, we've had this range of tragedies similar to it across the country uh, from the spa shootings last week, and just so many, unfortunately, so many examples. My purpose in talking today is just to acknowledge the suffering that's happening and has been happening throughout the country. I know people are directly related to what happened in Boulder and, and, and in the spas recently. Uh, and I just also want to acknowledge all the families and all of the people that have been triggered by these situations, with, whether it happened to their own family or people they knew or in their home state, that really involves the entire country. Uh, it's something that has just continued to trigger everybody. And even if something happened as long ago as Columbine, seeing something like this again can just open that trauma all over again. So I just want to make sure people have access to help. Jen Salachi is putting together her resources through her organization called Therapy Aid. Dot org. You can go to that website and see what resources are becoming available as I speak. Uh, you can also be part of the help as a therapist to support people that are going through this difficult event by registering at therapyaid.org forward slash register. You can participate. They have arranged already for sessions to be available free this week from 10 to 1 at the Unity of Boulder Church Spiritual Center in Boulder. So you can look up the address on the website and you can uh, go there from 10 to 1 and receive treatment. After that, it'll be low cost uh, or possibly some free treatment depending on how they are able to fund themselves. This is a really wonderful effort and I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of it. Uh, today, I'd really like to share some possible grounding exercises and regulation exercises because this shoots us full of fear and dysregulation when these things happen. So this is something you can do yourself or you're, if you're a therapist because you're holding really traumatic experiences for people, this is something that you could also use to regulate yourself between trauma sessions. So this is important information for all of us and all of us need to regain our sense of safety and also to have a container where we can feel our emotions and start to process this long journey of grief uh, about how this has been happening and how it's affected us personally. And I want to just start with just simply grounding. If you're seated, just to kind of press your feet into the floor and maybe feel your seat on the seat of the chair, just to let your body be there and see if you can embody any sensation that comes from moving in your joints a little bit just kind of wiggling your toes, uh, moving up into moving your ankles, uh, even moving your knees a little bit, just kind of making a gentle kick motion or any way your direction your knee wants to go. This helps us stay present in a way where we cannot be constantly in a dissociated or disconnected state. So just as you're wiggling your toes, your ankles, your knees, just letting that movement move into your hips, as you can see I'm doing, even though I'm not showing you my hips right now. And then just to start to feel the spine articulators move or just letting that awareness come through your vertebrae and just do it at your own pace. And even as you feel overwhelmed or you find yourself disconnecting or dissociating or becoming less conscious or less embodied, just take a moment to sit down or you can even do it standing and move your joints. Really helping our awareness come into our joints helps us feel what we call proprioception, helps us feel our bodies more. And we basically have more of our resources available to confront these really difficult times. And also for decision-making that might be difficult at a time like this as well. So just as you're moving your spine, you don't wanna forget your head, just let your head make these little tiny micro movements. Sometimes if you're in safe and you're in your home, you can um, close your eyes. For some people, it's a little easier with eyes closed. Just noticing these little micro movements, almost like there's the string to the sky from the top of your head. It's supporting your head and helping your head center on the atlas of your spine and just find center and balance. And I can even feel my state relaxing a little bit just from this much. 
uh, and just letting that head at your own pace, slowly, gently make these micro movements. And then we don't want to forget about our shoulders. Sometimes when we're scared and we're under threat, this has been a very scary time, just to let your, let, we sort of wear our shoulders for earrings. We can get a little bit like a turtle position. Just exaggerate that a little bit and then just feel when you have the impulse to let that, your shoulder blades slide across the back of your rib cage in the back and just, just maybe do it a few times because shoulders can hold a lot of tension and maybe move your shoulders forward and back or sort of like in a circular motion just to slowly, slowly bring awareness into that area because that is the body position of this keeps us in a hypervigilant state and, and sometimes that can lead to panic or overwhelm. So we're just trying to give you a few little avenues physiologically to return or emphasize a state of safety. And of course you wanna bring your elbows in, let your elbows move, eventually your wrists and eventually your fingers. And just, you can do this much slower than I'm doing it right now. Uh, and just to start to see what it's like to come back into your body. I also su suggest relationally that you connect with people that you feel safe with, that you feel supported by, um, talk to them on the phone or on Zoom. And just if you bring in somebody into your awareness right now that you feel is really on your side, has your back, is protective of you, just to take a moment to feel that relational space, that relational connection in your awareness right now, even if they're not in the room with you. Just imagine bringing those favorite people, sort of your personal ally team, into your awareness because connection and rich, secure attachments bring a lot of regulation for us. We are designed for pro-social behavior, our brain wants connection, our nervous system wants connection, our body wants connection. And just to see if you can bring that in either in real life, if you have these people living in your home right now and you're safe that way, or just imagining people that have been like that for you, whether they're previous teachers from when you were younger or mentors or spiritual teachers or friends or family or your dog or your cat, just to see if you can access that co-regulation of having another living being with you in a safe and supportive way. So we're working with physiology, but also our sense of relationship can be really empowering and helpful when we're struggling with really terrible, overwhelming events that of course we wish never would happen, uh, but they do sometimes. And I just want to give you some tools to manage the natural arousal and high arousal that might occur when you've been connected or listening to the news or actually in the terrible situation of losing a loved one or losing a, a friend in these circumstances um, to help us regulate. Now, I'm also kind of broadening my focus to also helping therapists who are listening and holding space for so many people to help them rejuvenate and feel more resilient even in the face of their um, being in the front lines. And in a way, sometimes therapists experience the trauma twice because it's affecting them in their area if they're from the Boulder area or from the areas that are under siege of, with these traumas. Or, and they're also hearing other people's stories. So they're, they're processing on their own. That's a big task. And then on top of it, trying to hold space to, for other people to share what's happening for them, which is such a, a beautiful thing and needed. And uh, we really, really appreciate all the therapists out there working in this way. Um, another thing that I, that I know is really helpful, it's called polyvagal nurturing. Uh, been on the internet a little bit and uh, seems to have risen from rhesio therapy originally, as I understand it. But I'm going to give you an adapted version of that. It's a little bit different, uh, but that really helps us address our um, physiology that can support our sense of safety. So when we call it polyvagal, it refers to Stephen Porges's research on uh, the polyvagal system, but has a lot to do with how do we move from threat to social engagement or to a sense of safety that helps us tolerate and also persevere and also heal and transform from overwhelming events. So one of the things that uh, you can do 
is start, I can't do this because I have a headset on, but start by pulling your earlobes all the way around and you can decide what pressure feels like, but not so gentle that you can hardly feel it, but just kind of tug on your earlobes that sort of helps the cranial nerve of hearing and listening uh, open up a little bit. And then as you do that, you might also just notice your breathing, take a little deep breath here and there. That's also helpful. And then the next phase of that going from the ears is to cover your eyes with your hands and just let yourself feel a little more pressure and then try a little lighter pressure and really decide where you feel the right sort of the sweet spot of pressure is and just notice how that feels. I can feel my nervous system down regulating, which just means getting calmer and a little more relaxed and just hold it there as long as that feels nourishing. You might just notice your breathing to see if your breathing deepens a little bit naturally, or maybe take a little bit of a deep breath and just adjust the pressure to where it feels like the right amount, as my friend Christina talks about. And then you want to slide your hands down the side of your face and hold your face with your two hands, just, just like you would um, um, as if you're holding the face of a child that you love and you're kind of looking in their eyes with love. Just feel that holding of the chin. And again, you can have your eyes closed. Just feel that holding of the chin and just let yourself relax into that. And then just check your breathing. You can take a little bit deeper breath if you'd like have your eyes open or your eyes closed. It's completely up to you and your body. Listen to your body. Your body has the right answer. And then as you're ready, just go ahead and bring your hands down the, the side of your face to your heart and just feel the support and the presence of your heart. Maybe you actually feel your heartbeat, just lovingly caressing and supporting your heart on the outside of your body like this. And maybe even breathing into your heart, just allowing that heartfulness to be acknowledged and felt. And right now there might be love, there might also be tremendous grief and sadness, even anger, all the emotions that might pop up understandably from such devastating circumstances. Just letting yourself be with whatever arises, allowing yourself to be with yourself, and even breathing into those hands, like breathing into your heart and letting your heart energy radiate out, just noticing your heart, your heartbeat. And then as you're ready, just slide your hands down the side of your body to, to rest on your belly, just a little bit right below your belly button. And just again, feel the support in your belly. Perhaps breathe into your hands that are holding your belly. Just being as present as you can to yourself in a compassionate way with all the tragedy that you're exposed to. And just breathe into your belly just to see if we can help you release a little bit of that so your body doesn't have to carry so much of it. Because so often when these difficult things happen, it's natural that we would constrict against the high arousal. We're just seeing if we can relax and let some of it move through so we actually have more space in ourselves to be connected and authentic and also see what needs to happen if anything can happen or just be present to the emotions that we're understandably trying to process. Now, another thing you can do is leave one hand on the belly and take your right hand and put it back on your heart to kind of connect your belly and your heart. Oh, that feels really good to me, that particular hold. Just notice how you might discharge a little bit of what you might have been called to hold. If you've been noticing quite a bit of fear, which is again, a natural response, just see another thing I'm going to add here is just placing your hands behind your neck, kind of at the base of your skull to give a little hold to that reptilian brain that the amygdala always shoots us to 
when there's something really scary or really overwhelming that's happening. So just to notice holding the back of your neck, kind of at the base of your skull. So some of your fingers are actually on your skull and some of your fingers are on the top of your neck and just letting yourself sort of rest into that connection. And just notice the support there it can be very helpful. So that's the, the conclusion of my version of polyvagal nurturing or physiological nurturing. And this is something you can do several times a day. If you're a therapist treating clients, you can do this between sessions and it can really help you continue your state of resiliency, your, your ability to be present to these very difficult and challenging times. There's another thing that I'd like to mention that sometimes it's helpful if we're trying to sleep because very often we can't sleep when these things are happening uh, is just to imagine your actual eyeball. It's, it's just imagining this, just imagine if your eyeball can relax back into the eye socket. It's easier for me to do this with my eyes closed, but just to relax and just almost like you're intending your eye, the actual eyeball to relax into the eye socket. And that usually will trigger the parasympathetic nervous system to shift into relaxation mode. So this is something, even when you're laying down, it's easy, easier to think about your eyeball relaxing back in. Um, but just that some, like your eyeball is supported and relaxing back. The reason this is helpful is sometimes when we're under threat, our eye position actually moves out. We get kind of that deer in the headlights eye position. And if you just even play with that for a moment, like let your eye, intend your eye to move a little bit forward, just a moment, and then back to the relaxation, you might notice, like when I do that, I imagine my eye moving forward, I get just a little anxiety in my heart, and I feel like my heart rate goes a little faster. But then as soon as I move my eye position back into the eye socket, like let it just float back as if it's in a hammock or on a lily pad or in a sea of aloe vera, whatever works for you as an image, just to let your eye float back. It is designed to trigger a parasympathetic relaxation response. So this can also be helpful. Obviously, you're not going to do this when you're driving. I just want to give you some things that might be helpful to you. One more um, regulation exercise that can be helpful is imagining your arms and legs uh, as tubes where arousal can go down your arms and out your fingertips or down your legs and out your toes, just to imagine, especially after doing the joint exercise that we started with, you kind of have to do the joint exercise to make sure that you're connected to your body enough that you can al allow discharge and release to happen. Because when we're really constricted in muscles or we're disconnected, we have a dissociation or a gap of awareness in our joints, we don't have the connectivity that can allow our defensive responses like imagining ourselves fighting or imagining ourselves running away uh, in imagination that this arousal wants to trigger a defensive response, which if it's an active response, it's usually fight or flight. If it's a passive response, it can be like collapse or a freeze state. And we may wonder, why didn't I say anything? Or why didn't I do anything? Or why do I feel so helpless? Sometimes it's because we're in a physiological state that feeds that feeling. And one of the reasons I want to share at least some of these regulation exercises is that we want to see if we can process what happened as soon as we possibly can so that the body doesn't start creating symptoms around the tragedy that we've been exposed to. And sometimes a tragic event happens even 18 months to two, 24 months before we actually get symptoms. But if we can help the arousal be acknowledged and be felt and then move through and discharge, we can help a lot of resiliency against creating trauma symptoms in our physiology that also extends into our mind and our emotions and all aspects of our awareness. So I'm hoping this has been a little bit helpful. I know this is a really stressful time. And uh, I just, again, want to share my love and compassion to everyone in the Boulder area. And of course, with everything else that's going on in difficult circumstances, we're already dealing with the pandemic. And then on top of it are these mass shootings. And it's just a lot uh, for us to stay present to and to, to try to 
reach our resiliency with. And, and for those of you that are volunteering as a therapist to help people through this experience in Boulder, I just want to remind you that there are free sessions available from 10 to 1 for clients at the Unity of Boulder Church Spiritual Center in Boulder. And you can register to be a therapist if that's your calling uh, to be helpful in, with, these, with people that are suffering uh, by signing up and registering that a form you'll find at Therapy Aid. AID, therapyaid.org forward slash register. And then you'll see a form that you can fill out to become one of the volunteer or um, available therapists for this situation. And we have done this earlier uh, with COVID and now we're adding, um, Jen Salachi is adding this orientation to help what's happening with everybody that's been affected by the Boulder shooting. So I want to put a shout out to Jennifer. She's doing a great job and all of the therapists that are um, being available for free therapy this week and then free and low cost therapy in an ongoing way. I just wanted everybody to know about this incredible resource that um, they're putting together through therapyaid.org. So thank you so much for taking a moment to listen. And I hope these regulation exercises, which you can repeat or you can facilitate with your clients if you're a therapist, certainly we need to facilitate them with ourselves because it's super important that we stay regulated. And we also need support and connection to go through this time, whether we're a helper or whether we're on the other side receiving help all the way around, it's, it's important. So thank you again. And I appreciate having this time with you. Bye for now.